you produced on whole lot of red yeah bino man how did that song come about like well, everybody, everybody who on that beat sent Cardi beats mm -hmm. all the time. So it's like, whichever one that got picked, that bitch got picked. That's one the only got picked. Hey. Yo, 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 it's your boy Hakeem. And you're watching Our Generation Music. And today, I'm with the future's next star, my nigga Ken Carson. What's up? What's up? Yeah. How you doing today, my boy? Straight. I'm good, yeah. Man, what was your day like today and shit? Today was crazy. Crazy as day. Crazy as hell. I mean, it's the day before opening night. Yeah, I'm... I don't know what the fuck they expect from this shit. I don't know. I mean, bro, they've been bro, like, I just put out one tweet like, yeah, we're about to do the interview and the niggas broke my Twitter. They've been in my Instagram live like, yo, when's this interview coming out? Like, it's about to get crazy. You excited? You going to drop it tomorrow? Yeah. Tomorrow. You going to drop it tomorrow? It's going to be fucking crazy. Yeah. Um, sure that shit gonna get well, I did hear the new album and stuff, but I want to talk about, you know, your past before that, before yeah. we even get into that. Um, uh, where are you from for all the people that don't know? I'm from Atlanta. What part of Atlanta? Uh, when I was first born, I said on the West side, like when I was younger, mm -hmm. like before, before I was even like 14, but then I moved to the South side. Mm -hmm. That's when I met, uh, 88 and TM 88 and South side. Mm -hmm. Everybody, that's not the way my feet like. Mm, okay. That's but great. when I was 15, I had uh, dropped out of school and had went to uh, military school. You went to military school? Yeah. How long did you spend in military school for? I got kicked out of military school. <laughs> I got kicked out of military school because uh, I had my phone. And you weren't supposed to have your phone in there. Uh -huh. I had an iPhone. And that's your FaceTime. I'm on FaceTime. I had to I'm, get them bitches up. Like, can't not do that. <laughs> Especially they sent me home. I, you were supposed to stay there for like six months. They sent me home like three months in. <laughs> he did half his time. Yeah. <laughs> that's fucking crazy, man. But yeah. That shit was weird though. Mm. Did you learn any like skills or anything? Yeah, there? for sure. You really just learn, like, just shut up. Like, just be quiet. Like, just shut up and be quiet. Yeah, I like you that. You think more, and it's like, should it be way better if you just think more mm -hmm. and just stop talking? Yeah. Read the room a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And just learn to, when to play your cards. Yeah, that's facts. No cap. For sure. Learn to when to play your cards, show your hands. Mm -hmm. Those are very important that's things. That's what you do, for real. I learned some shit from there. I ain't gonna lie. That shit was cool. What, okay. What were you listening to growing up, like? What inspired you early on? Like what what age range we talking about? Like, cause it's I'm still early so there's on. like errors in. I haven't heard a lot of music. Oh yeah, you time. are pretty young. Okay, like let's say like middle school around when you start developing middle your school, taste. Middle school, I was listening to Lil Wayne. Middle school was Lil Wayne for sure. Yeah, and uh, early in, a little earlier than that was Soulja Boy. Yeah, yeah, I was listening to Soulja Boy. I was like on some internet shit. Uh huh. I used to listen to what, what what era of Lil Wayne was that? Was that Cardi Three for you or? Yeah. Okay. But earlier than that, like, my mom used to play Future and shit. Like, your mom is lit for that. <laughs> but when he was making mixtapes like Dirty Sprite mm -hmm. and Thousand, people weren't in tune like that. It was just Atlanta, like. Yeah, it was about an to Atlanta say. thing. Yep. That shit was crazy, man. But that was the only thing that I really knew that. At that time, so yeah. it was like that was music. Mm -hmm. That shit was hard. She never played no like soulful stuff or like nah. R and B. Nah, that's fucking fire. Nah, I ain't really. I started tripping when I hear like some weird songs. Like, I ain't really songs that like really like make me angry. Like she wouldn't even like play nothing around me. Mm. That would even trigger me. Okay, that type of shit. She's like, mom, just play the future. 
and that's it. Yeah, You've done sure. a great job. Cause the song, oh, back then songs was nasty as hell. Mm -hmm. Especially future right. underground like mixtape shit. Nah, sure. I'm talking about that R and B shit. Oh, that oh shit. the R and B shit. That yeah. Shit. That shit, that shit was very like that was all baby making music shit, man. Yeah, like, like, nah, I wasn't trying to hear that shit. Nah, oh god. And then like three years later, you're trying to hear that shit because you want to fuck bitches now. <laughs> nah, I ain't. I'm still not trying to hear that shit. Really, I don't be listening to nothing. I ain't nah, lie. I be listening to myself a lot. I make damn near everything. So. That that's like Wayne. Wayne doesn't listen to anything but himself. Yeah, that's why I, I watched Jenny Bill. I felt them like. Real I shit. hard felt them like everything he was saying. People mm -hmm. was thinking like he was crazy, but really, you just be so in tune into yourself mm -hmm. that it's like, and it'll give you time. And that's your job. Like, you gotta work on yourself. Make better music. Yeah, make your best music. You gotta know yourself. It'll give you time to like really um, sit and just you know really deep dive into your shit for real, for real. Like, yeah, really be able to correct and. Work on your craft, yeah. really. Living it. Cause if you listening to everybody's shit, then now you trying to be like live. everybody. It it inspires you in ways. Mm -hmm. You can't say it don't inspire you, cause it's like you're around it and mm -hmm. you keep listening to it. Like then you go into the studio and that's what you like presenting out in the in the booth. Yeah, for sure. That's why I don't listen to nothing. That's a good. I like that. It's gonna benefit you for sure. Yeah, facts. Um, um, been working. How did you uh, get your name and everything? Ken Carson came from uh, my name, Ken. So, mm -hmm. uh, the Barbie doll, Ken Carson. Barbie uh, boyfriend. <laughs> he just he just got a hard lifestyle. I just want to live like him. He is for sure he living it, he living, living life. life for sure. Bad bitch. Yeah. Nice car. She got yeah. a nice car. Nice home. Yeah. He just slanging yeah. wood. Just <laughs> <laughs> he just living good. Yeah. Like that's all he do. Just slay Barbie. He just chilling, bro. He just slay but wood. I, you know but I'm a little better than him, though. I'm I'm gonna get my own. Like oh, he ain't God. got his own shit. For real, for real. I feel like even when you get rich and super successful, you gotta get a bitch that's just like way more rich and like more powerful than you. Like bitch, like it's like the Chappelle show skit with Oprah. You ever seen that shit? Nah, I'm you probably should. too young for that shit. But I watch Chappelle show and shit. You should watch that one. Like you gotta. You get say it. your bitch should have more money. Than you. Yeah, yeah. It's pros and cons to that. You can have either or. It's whatever you like. Really, yeah. Like, actually, actually, whatever actually. come down your path. You can't really just be shooting for. Oh, I'm just gonna get a rich bitch. Like, yeah, I think she that's come, just, she come. That's just a Jamaican and me talking. These <laughs> bitches don't be rich anyway. <laughs> Nah, they be cap. These bitches for sure cap about the Instagram cappers and flexers. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, like, this is not rich. Oh, God. So, the first project, man. Yeah. <sighs> fucking crazy. Yeah. The Barbie, like, man, like. Oh, you talking about my first, first project? Yeah. yeah. Boy Barbie. Yeah. Yeah, that shit was that shit was cool. That was just something to put out. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't have no music out because before somebody had deleted my SoundCloud. This girl I used to talk to, she mm -hmm. had deleted my SoundCloud, so I had to like make some shit and put some shit out. Mm -hmm. And that's the shit I made. And you you had Lancey on there. How did you, yeah. you guys link up and stuff? Lancey came to uh, Atlanta to um, fuck with the gang. He came to fuck with Open. He came to fuck with the gang. I fought with Lancey. Silence. He's for sure hard. Like he's yeah, definitely right. one of them niggas over there. And the, he and, holding it uh, down for sure. For sure. Definitely Silence. go check his shit out. Yeah. Yeah. He he be going crazy. I know, but Lance. Man, where were you uh, recording like your first music at? Was it at a homie's house or like first music? Uh, this this still is my first music. Like mm -hmm. I haven't made like I ain't got really. That deep, much deep, material. Deep. Yeah, but I've been making music for a long time, but it's like now this this year, mm -hmm. I count this year as like me like actually taking it serious and trying to like mm -hmm. actually put out something crazy. So like I've been in the studio for real. Like studio. Where, where was like the first session? Like where was the first session that you ever recorded? My first session ever recorded. Uh Atlanta. In Atlanta, it's like 
you can call studios and just book one. Mm-hmm. Only I forgot what what studio I booked. Some shit by Cumberland. Okay. It was by Cumberland. Oh, that shit was far. I was calling studios all night that night. Mm. Was calling studios all night. Couldn't get in the studio. Called that studio. That shit was far as hell. You know that shit far as hell. Did you do you, you remember the um song you recorded and yeah it was it geeked out? up. It's on um it's on Boy Barbie. It's on that Boy Barbie. Uh, my first shit. It's called Geeked Up, but it's old as hell though. I probably made it like twenty seventeen. Mm. That shit hard. Yeah, that shit still hard. That's... <laughs> <laughs> Were you geeked out the night you made it? Like yeah, I was talking. <laughs> for sure, geeked up. I was high for sure. Man, yeah, that shit hard for sure. Um, at what point, like, did you realize, like, yo, the music is it? This is what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life. When I um, when I went to military school, I was like, fuck, mm-hmm. damn, what the hell you gonna do? Like, just put what I got to work. Like, I knew, I know who I knew. Like, I know a lot of people, so mm-hmm. it's like. It wouldn't be hard for me to like present it, like put it out and have people listen to it. Mm-hmm. But it got to be good though. So it's like you got to just work on it being good first mm-hmm. and then put it out. And everybody will fuck with it. They first listen is good. Mm-hmm. Like they're going to look for the next one. But if your first shit is not like nothing, mm-hmm. they're going to be like. <clears throat> exactly. And you know, you said you know a lot of people and stuff. So yeah. I guess TM eighty eight mm-hmm. Southside. Uh-huh. You presented them your music first uh-huh. on. Yeah, facts. What was I used like- to make songs with like TM eighty eight and Southside like all night, all day, but like we went never like put nothing out. Mm-hmm. But we'll make like a lot of shit. But they'll be working on shit too. Like we're just making shit on the side. Like. Were you in the studio when any like maybe hit songs from them came out or anything like that? That you can vividly remember? Um, yeah, it's been... I've been with them for a, a couple of years. So it's like, bro, I can go all day but about that shit. Bro. Oh, wow. I know for sure when they made... When they was making beats to like Super Slimy and shit. You was around for all that? Yeah, that's right. So I was around for that. Legendary. CM88 had made some shit with Uzi. I put up on them for like a couple times. Okay. And... We was out here, actually, we was out here in LA for mm-hmm. like three months or probably like two months. CM88 and Sasha, I was working on the um, album. But I don't know. They ain't never put that bitch out. But it's a, it's some hard a ass songs. CM88 and Southside album? Yeah. Wow. Edward right Mafia shit. That sounds nuts. Yeah. That, that shit was crazy. Like, like everybody pulled, every artist pulled up to the house and made some shit. Everyone. So it was a collab project between TM88 and Southside producing it. Yeah. And they had artists, different artists jumping mm-hmm. up. Bro, that sound like it's crazy. <laughs> like a it's still crazy. The like we in the studio A from NY Place and shit. Like we ain't nothing else to do, but they know what they got, but bro, I'm excited for it. I hope that I hope that for sure touches iTunes and yeah, Spotify right. one yeah. day <laughs> for sure. You know, speaking of producers and stuff too. Who's who's your favorite producer? Like, who are the who are of the, all time or right now? Of all time and right now. Mm. Right now, my favorite producer is Starboy, Out of Town, Lady. Mm. Them three. Those, ne- those are those are the next guys, man. Yeah. For sure, coming. No, that was right now. Yeah. For sure. Right now, for sure. What about of all time? Mm, I got to give it to like TM88 and mm-hmm. Southside. Like, I'm the same, same thing. Because I just seen both of them work mm-hmm. by myself. Like just me and them. I just seen both of them go crazy. So it's like, that shit beautiful. It's definitely inspiring, I'm sure, to yeah. see. Those people that work at that high level, mm-hmm. like they work all day, all night. Is that where you stop? You think you get some of your work ethic from? Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. All day, all night. I get it from producer, and I just rap with that work ethic. So you're taking your, just, you're taking your producer oh. vision and taking it to rap. Mm-hmm. 
That's fine. That shit is crazy. And they make it like 10 times crazier. Like, yeah. Shit is crazy. Yeah, there's been a lot of really great producers that turn into rappers or producer yeah. rappers. Yeah. Kanye, like, you know? Yeah, fact. Pharrell. Yeah. Like, you know, like. That's all I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be like, Pharrell. Hey, even with the fashion shit. Okay, I yeah. see. I mean, Kanye too, but for sure. Pharrell yeah, Kanye was, too. But Pharrell came before. Yeah. So we know where. Both. I feel both. Yeah, for sure. You know, you produced on Whole Lot of Red. Yeah. Bino. Man, how did that song come about? Like, uh, we've been in the studio, like, we sing. Well, everybody, everybody who on that beat sent Cardi beats mm -hmm. all the time. So it's like, whichever one got picked, that bitch got picked. That's one the one that got picked. Mm -hmm. That's how that shit went. Okay, bet. We would do, what did you add? Like, what did you do on, on the, that song? In the loop. I yeah. helped them with the loop. Helped out of town. Okay, bet. Fire. Um, and a little what, AA. Yeah, are, how was your, like, you know, your creative process, like, going to make a beat with somebody like collab with them. Do you prefer to uh, like start the loops or the drum or wait for the drums? Only, I haven't collabed with like, I haven't really collabed with like just anybody. Like I ain't never collabed with nobody outside of the homies. Yeah, with eighty eight out of town and start with. It's like mm, I don't feel like I would know how to collab with somebody else because they wouldn't have they shit already set up right. Okay. So you already, you guys are already in a good system of yeah. working with each other. That's the best, man. Like, yeah, that should be something crazy. It just makes it easier and fun, and just yeah. like I know my man is gonna handle the hi hats. Yeah. I'm gonna handle this, and he gonna handle Fact. the drums. It's just like it's just like uh, the Warriors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's really the Warriors for real. It's just like the Warriors, man. It's and like, it's 100 percent every time. Mm -hmm. It's like we know we're leaving here with bangers. Like, yeah, fact. nothing but. Like that's the best, man. Is I think like music is such a collaborative experience. You got to go out and find people you can collaborate mm -hmm. and work really well. Yeah, cause Starboy and Out of Town, they um they live in Amsterdam. What? Like, I ain't never seen them ever a day in my life. You've never seen them? Uh. -uh. So how did this relationship start? Like, how did you guys all like get cool with each other? Uh, Starboy had made some shit that sounded like some shit that I made, and I asked him like. Mm hmm. Like, how the hell? How the hell you even hear that? Because I never even put that song out. Mm -hmm. He was like, I've been following this shit, dude. And I fought with him ever since that day. I talked to him every day on FaceTime. Like, wow. If I call him right, <laughs> if I call him, if I call him right now, he'll pick up. But yeah, that's crazy. him and out of town. Those two. I'm on the phone with them in a group FaceTime call all day, every day. Plotting? Yeah. Take all day, every day, like, what we gonna do? Like, being around, what was the like seeing the whole lot of red process? Like, what was mm -hmm. that like? What was those sessions like that you were around for? I mean, he he recorded on a daily basis, so like, it's like a you go to a session, you record mm -hmm. all night, we record bounce time. Damn. 12, 12, 12. <laughs> 12 to 12. 12 to 12. That's crazy. All the time. That's, that's, he really lit his vampire life. Yeah, like, fact. That's fucking crazy, man. That's crazy. Okay. Um, T-Nex. Uh-huh. Where did you get that name from? Like, how? what does that come from? Uh, it's like, you know, it means teenage ecstasy. It's like a young high. Mm-hmm. Just a young high boy. Young high, young, high, young nigga. T-Nex. You know how you name a superhero? Mm hmm But it's probably a bad influence superhero. Like this this is the the Don't worry, your mom probably don't want you to like hang out with. Yeah, you feel me? <laughs> the bad but kid. but the one you the one you want to hang out with. This this the good life. Yeah. How did you and uh how did you and Cardi meet? How did you guys meet? Uh I met Cardi like 2016, mm -hmm. 17, I think. I don't know which one, but it was out here. In LA? Nah, the first time it was in Atlanta. I think it was at um Southside, one of the Southside studio sessions. But I seen him again in LA, like a month later, so we had a show. I had mm -hmm. got kicked out of this show because I had got the fame. 
And he was like, damn, what the hell are you doing all the way out here, young what? nigga? <laughs> I'm like, shit, I just got the plane. Let me get a let me get a wristband, get back in. He gave me the wristband. I ain't gonna lie, I ran back in. Like I ran back in, I seen his ass. He showed love early on. Yeah, in fact, him, he probably don't even know that. That was that was the initials that sparked it. Like, yeah, he don't even he don't know. That. That's crazy. At what point did you like guys talk about like, yo, I'm about to sign an opium? Like, Ooh. like when did that come about? When did those conversations start coming around? When probably like ever since I've been around, really. Like, okay, past two years, this shit just been like he's just working on it. Putting it all the pieces together yeah. and shit. What what is opium? Like, what does opium mean? Like, what does that mean to you guys? Like, what is opium? Is a label. It's a lifestyle. It's label. Yeah, facts. Opium. You know what opium is? Opium fly. Get you geek. Yeah. <laughs> opium. High lifestyle. King X, young opium. So the music is like it's just like a high, like yeah. It's a vibe. Facts. Yeah. I like that, man. That's hard. That's hard as hell. Yeah. Shit, man. I like that. That's hard. Are we going to get, you think we get a collective opium album? For sure. Have you guys even possibly started working on anything like that? That shit. That shit going to knock people right over your head. That shit going to come out just on the random. Oh, man. what's What's it like when you guys are all together in the studio? Like. Damn the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Everybody pop. just high as fuck. Smack. Someone, somebody might be asleep. Mm-hmm. Might be woke. Man. Everybody working though. That's fine. Whole studio working. Wow. Oh, okay. That's hard. I can see that, man. The vamps outside. Actually inside. <laughs> <laughs> This shit go crazy, man. Yeah, <laughs> Niggas hanging from the ceiling, all types of shit. Okay. <laughs> all types of shit. <laughs> Weird shit, boy. Oh, man. Oh, man. Um, you performed at Cyber World. Uh-huh. How was that? I had fun at that shit. That shit was cool. That shit looked good, man. It looked yeah, cool. Yeah, I with Cyber World. Yeah. Cyber Cyber World. The production, like, just overall, the visual experience was really dope mm-hmm. for that. I liked what they did there for sure. Yeah, I fucked with Cyber World. That shit was fun. Mm, yeah. I saw you fit it out, you know. Be loaned <laughs> head to toe all white. How, when did you start getting into fashion and shit? Like, uh, Probably at a young age when like Jeremy Scott was dropping. Mm-hmm. Shit with Adidas when he first was. That's what I really, really liked. I wasn't even noticing like that this is fashion. Mm-hmm. Like, that's just what I like. But then when he got, when they stopped like making shit, mm-hmm. that's when I started looking for other shit. Like, what the fuck? Like, how the hell are they just gonna stop making shit? This is what this, this is what I'm wearing. Like, start looking into other shit and start seeing where certain designs come from. Yeah, and like most of them were like Japanese or something, mm-hmm. and that's what got me into like Japanese brands, that's like cool. Undercover and Number Nine. Yeah, right, I see yeah, thanks. Um, what are some of your like fashion dreams and aspirations? Like you see yourself walking, owning a brand. What do you see yourself doing? Uh I feel like I if I want to do something fashionly, like mm-hmm. or fashion fashionable, I do it through my merch. Because mm-hmm. that's where I can really like do whatever I whatever yeah. I want. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Mm-hmm. Nah, so that's know. me like Designing a form of you, just merch. expressing your own, shit, yeah, for sure. T next, is there a particular song on there that the fans are gravitating towards? Yeah, yeah. What, like, what inspired Yale? Like, where did where did that song come from? I don't even know. I just walked in the studio, it was the studio in LA. I still haven't booked that studio since the day. I don't really want to book that studio, but like, mm-hmm. you walk in and you just the booth is right there and. You walk through another door, and that's where the lobby is, where, where like everybody can sit mm-hmm. down and shit. But everybody was already sitting down, and I just came in the booth, and I already had my engineer pull the mm-hmm. beat up because me and 
way we work, I just had them pull the next beat up that I got. That was the beat. So I just sat down and just recorded like on a normal one every day. Yeah. Sit down and record. That's fire. What do you find? Like, what do you look for in a beat? Like, what are you looking for? It's like, yo, I got to get on this. The sounds, bro. It's def definitely the sounds. People be, people be making like crazy 808, like hard ass 808 ass beats. Mm -hmm. That shit don't be meaning shit sometimes. Like, the sounds got to be right. Like, I like how shit sounds. Like, the overall, like, layers to the music. Mm -hmm. Like, if anything, I like the loops more than like drums and shit. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, you're a producer too. So if somebody yeah. sends you a hard loop, you can cook it up. I really fuck with doing loops over, like sending somebody a loop over, just playing Hobie or something. Oh, okay. I bet. I can see that. That's hard. I, you ever thought about um maybe recording just straight to the loops and having people build around your song or something like that? I feel like that's what we do sometimes. Okay. But we don't we don't present it until it's done. Mm. Until the song is finished. Like we're done with the whole song. Okay, big. Yeah, I've been seeing and I've been noticing that a lot lately. I've been around a few sessions now and I've been seeing just niggas just, just recording over the loops and people are just odd, Putting drums in, mm -hmm. but nah, I I record over the whole beat though. I don't record over no loops. Yeah, wow, yeah. The debut project is coming out probably as soon as this drop tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Um, what can you tell us about it? Like, where did you record this? Um, I made I made all of it in L.A. In L.A. Yeah, all of it. It's fire, man. The vibes, man. Yeah, cause it's easy for me to like. It's easy, easy for me to do everything in LA. Like, mm -hmm. mm. LA is just easy, to, easy place to be. I'm who, a, who produced on this album? Did you produce on it or who did? Uh, nah, I didn't make anything on it. But Art Diller, uh, Starboy Out of Town, Lady Eight, Rourke Bailey, and Jewel. Mm. Shout out Rourke. Shout out the Rourke. homie. Yeah, shout really out dope engineer. Shout out to him. What What do you think? Like from T next to this, like what do you think you've learned now to make this a better project? The sounds that people want to hear. I feel like. I feel like I know more what people want to hear now. You just hear, and I feel like I've been structuring it better, like presenting it better mm. than than before. And you um. No features on this. Mm -mm. Got to. Not yet. Yeah. Y'all get y'all get your Cardi feature soon. It, it'll come soon. Not not this one. Sorry guys, the man's got a plan. Um, Butterfly is my favorite joint on that shit. Yeah, that shit's hard, bro. <laughs> the fuck, man? Like how? Like how did that song come about? Like how did Butterfly come about? How? I I record every day. Like I got, I probably got a couple songs that that's like that. But that's that's a super hard one. Mm -hmm. Like I make a lot of music, so like, mm -hmm. it just be in the moment. Like it's so in the moment. Like sometimes if I'm on Instagram mm -hmm. and I'm going to the studio, or I made a video on the way to the studio, I probably make some crazy and then go look back at it they like damn this the day like how the fuck i just i decided to post on this day mm. and make that shit that happens every time i make some shit though i won't even notice it i just be in the vibe already before i even get to the studio okay what were you like watching and consuming and just listening to around that time like what were you visually watching like what what was your feelings and vibes like before you made this project or or in the making of it on some Project X shit, like, but me in the studio by myself. Mm. Okay. Project X in like the crazy ass movie with the kids mm -hmm. partying. Yeah. This is a geeked out. This yeah. is a geeked out album. Yeah. So like basically this this body of work could have been the soundtrack to that. Yes, yeah, fact. Okay. 
Like if they redid like a new version of Project X. This would be a whole soundtrack for sure. 100%. Yeah. That's fire. I like for that. For sure. I like that. I like that spin. This one and the first one. Teen X and Relapse. Both yeah. together. That's a whole fucking. It's a movie. It's Project X. This is a geeked Teen out X. night. Um, Teen X. So you recorded Teen X. The first one? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You were so. Teen, yeah, you recorded that. I recorded, I, co- I recorded the first one. Um, During a whole lot of red sessions? Yeah. <laughs> that's fucking fire. I had man. posted. I had posted. That's what I was recording. But. I really wasn't even supposed to be recording because that was really, he was really, uh, he was really locking in. Mm-hmm. But I was around and sometimes the mic could be open. So I just, mm-hmm. Hop on but in. I only made those, only only made those songs. So like. It was no leftover. It was just No that. leftover, nothing. Just that. And, you just and like, I'll put it out. I got some here. I'm going to put this out. Yeah. I came to LA and I shot the Yale video. I put it out. That's fire, and I I I, um, I applaud you for um, taking advantage of that moment and just yeah, really, I ain't gonna lie. You gotta just take advantage of the time given, bro. And I think you, you can create some more time somewhere else. Exactly. Sure. I think you have a clear understanding of just maximizing every yeah. single opportunity. Yeah, fact. Like I gotta make this moment mm-hmm. more bigger. I gotta. I gotta. That's great. Sure. You're young, bro. A lot of young people don't know that. And that's yeah. dope. You fucking, you know, obviously you've been around a lot of people that mm-hmm. work and now they, they know that. So that's really good that you took you that. You just got to take advantage of your time. For sure. Life is short, man. Yeah. For sure. A hundred percent. You got any um, videos planned um, for the Yeah, album? I'm dropping sh- high shit tonight. Tonight, high shit you is coming out. dropping this tomorrow, right? Yeah, yeah we're dropping this tomorrow. So high shit comes out tonight. Where'd you shoot this video? Out here? Yep. In this exact spot right here? <laughs> I'm sure that was probably a crazy ass night. I was high as fuck. I ain't gonna <laughs> lie. We had so much drink, bro. And so much weed, bro. <laughs> we was high as shit, for real. Did you just get super high and was like, yo, I'm at a certain point and I'm just like, we got to shoot this video because I'm that high? I might drop a behind the scenes of that video. <laughs> that would be crazy. That song a beggar too, man. Like, yeah. Were you geek, just geek the fuck out that night? And just was like, yo. Actually, I wanted to be high that night. No, 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 no. Actually, I was. Jay. Jay. Remember I said before I made this song, I said, boy, this song for you, boy. <laughs> I said, this song for you, boy. I said, this for your drinking that. Oh, my gosh. When did you start, made it. When did you start drinking lean and shit? Oh, it's when I started drinking lean and shit. Uh, probably when I was like 16. Okay. I graduated when I was 15. So it was like. From high school or middle school? I got, I got, I dropped out, of, I dropped out of high school, went to military school. Got my diploma. Like, even though I got kicked out, mm-hmm. I think I was the third dude to get get done with the school shit. I wasn't retarded. I just wanted to get the fuck out of that bitch. Nah. I After the it. school shit, I was ready to dip. You had bigger and better things awaiting for you. Facts. I started making music and shit. And you took boom, the ground boom, boom. Boom. Yeah. You had um the first song on this project is uh Teen X Babe. Um why why that to like you know, set the tone. Why? Why'd you go with that first? Cause that's my favorite song. I don't know. I just want to get out the way. Like, here go my favorite song. Like, okay. I know y'all want no other shit, but this is my favorite song. This, like, this the one for me. Yeah, in fact. That's fine. What, what inspired that song? Uh, I made that the same time I made Butterfly. So like, that beat came, and then Rourke sent that beat. I was just in the zone, like knocking them out. Yeah. How many? How many? That's songs? usually how it is. Like. I call somebody, call a producer, like, yo, I'm already in the studio. Like, send me something right now. I need something right now. They'll send me some shit. And most, nine times out of 10, they know what I want. So, yeah, I knock that shit out Cause too you're, quick. Because you're already in that ecosystem of working yeah. with who. And while I was making that shit, I was out to drink too. I fell asleep. I woke up. You remember? I was fell asleep. I woke up and I was like, Damn, let's record. He risen. I started recording. He played B. I started recording. It was one take. 
one take for that yeah. whole song. Yeah. Sheesh, is it, is it usually come that easy for you? Like, or you feel like uh, some songs be one take. Some songs be one take. Wow. How how does so you, you don't write anything at all? No, you just I don't go write straight now. there and just comes all out. Yeah. Wow. The better, the more, the more I like the beat, the easier, the easier it is for me to make a song. Have you ever tried to write and you just couldn't do it? I used to write. Mm -hmm. That's how I started making music. Like, I'd be in the studio. I would dead ass book a studio, be in the studio, write while the beat playing. Like, time's still going. While the beat playing, I'm writing. I probably, four hours, I get one song done. Mm hmm. That shit wasn't cutting it though. Like that shit was too expensive for me to be wasting studio doing time. Doing that. So I had to find out a different way to do it. And then when I I used to go to the studio with Young Thug a lot too. Okay. So I used to see him record like when Gunner first when he first starts coming mm -hmm. around. Mm-hmm. I used to watch them record. They used to record just Go crazy, like just sit down, sit down, and go crazy. So them doing that just showed you, like, hey, I can do this too. Nah, it's just like, God damn, like, damn, this is y'all doing. God this, damn. this is this is it. <laughs> There's nothing else to but it. But I, I don't sit down when I record. I oh, stand you stand up. in the booth. Yeah, I got my own way of doing it. I just took it and made, did my, did my own thing with it. Are you in the studio with the engineer? Nah, she, or you going to booth? see people be in the studio like next. Year. I go in the booth. I go in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> I go in the booth and I be standing up. And that's how my songs be like so energized because I'm oh, actually in there. You like, in there like moving around. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. You be <laughs> seeing me? Geeked out in there. That's like Hugh Jackman when he does like the behind the scenes for Wolverine. Like yeah, right. he really like really sits he really there and does crazy. it. Like he really goes crazy. Like you're really like that's how you deliver. That's why your music has that, you know, it's very minimalistic in a sense, but it's just, it's so bouncy and hard and yeah. everything, everything matters. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like every single layer to it, every single thing matters, Fact. even though it's simple, but man, that little simple bell, it matters. Mm -hmm. It glues so well with this hi-hat and this 808 and this clap and this snare, like- And me saying whatever. Whatever you say, mm -hmm. like it all like, everything sits in the right pocket. Like that shit hard. Like it, it's really, really fucking, it's dope because I feel like we're in a different time with frequencies right. and the music don't need to be that complicated no more at all. Like, which I appreciate super complicated shit, but like, bro, get me to it, bro. Turn that shit on, get it going. <laughs> Two minutes. <laughs> no, I'm, I got longer shit. I just don't, it's just right now. Like right now, mm -hmm. I'm just putting out this. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I got way, way longer songs than like, it's just a like, lot of shit to put out that's coming out. Yeah. It's good repay value, man. It's gonna, it's just gonna, I gotta listen to this five times. That's what we're making fans do. I mean, I try to make it as catchy as possible so you, so you can listen to it again. Mm, yeah. On the low, you like ended out, last song on there. Why you decided to close it out with that and just end it there? If you listen to the song, I'm really talking about like niggas being talking on the low, like oh the sneak this in, yeah, stealing your sauce, stealing yeah, your swag, yeah. never good. It's just closing it out. Oh, so you putting an end mm -hmm. to it? Yeah. Okay. That's far. I like that. Yeah, I'm ex I'm very excited to to hear this. Well, I'm, so I'm probably gonna go to this party tonight. <laughs> probably go to a party tomorrow because it's not out, and I'm gonna have the DJ bump that shit. For sure. Turn the fuck up. I got a pop up uh, Monday. Okay, but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna stop by that. Pull up. That's gonna be hard. You gonna be selling your merch and stuff. Mm -hmm. Is this your first pop up or anything? Mm -hmm. oh, that's gonna go crazy. Yeah. You should just say fuck and just jump on whatever table and just perform in that bitch. That would be the most viral shit right I'm now. I'm sure I'm going to be in there just turning up with whoever there. I'm going to post the address tomorrow and shit. Okay, good. So you've had a lot of problems with Instagram and SoundCloud. Like my whole fucking life, huh? 
Like it's like I can't even be on break. social media. What 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 happened? Like what happened with your SoundCloud being deleted first? Oh my SoundCloud. Uh, I was talking to this girl and she got mad because I started talking to this other girl. <laughs> I started talking to my girlfriend who I was talking to, and she got mad and deleted my shit. And how did the Instagram get deleted? The first time. It's not. She had changed the fucking password and shit. Mm hmm. Like to this day. It's on there, but. Can't get in. Can't do nothing. Fuck. And then now, tonight, your shit a couple hours ago got deleted. Or what? We don't know what happened to it. It'll be back. It'll be back. Well, all right, Instagram. Stop Instagram fucking. Instagram, bring my shit back, bro. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good to y'all. He's good to y'all, man. We usually do this to close it out. Uh, what's your uh, message for our generation? Enjoy your life. Enjoy your life. No matter what's going on, no matter how low, how high, are, how high, how low, because it'll, them be motherfuckers fucked up. But mm -hmm. no matter how low you are, bro, just keep going. Enjoy, enjoy whatever you're doing. No matter. No matter what. All right, bit. All right, my boy. All right.